An interesting twist has happened on the free street lithium cells that you can find discarded in the gutter in devices like this. This is a new variant of this particular one, and it's supposed it's called something like Blue 1000. And what's interesting is the lithium cell inside is designed to be easy to remove, which is refreshing. Also, probably makes it easy to manufacture. But the interesting is, look at the sort of coaxial contacts in the bottom here. So normally this is held in place in the unit and pushed up against these gold contacts, these gold flash contacts here, so that it makes the electrical connection. And as you saw, when I put that in, you saw the little unit power up and flash its light. To get these open, you can leave this bit in. This is the uh, mouthpiece, and it's just friction fit in. But there is a sort of glued-in plastic ring at the bottom here, and there's this little end cap, tamper-proof end cap, that maybe it's because I've loosened it, but certainly it being it caps out, which is useful. Maybe it does being it cap, cap out as a standard, but it's worth mentioning this is a sort of child-proof activation thing that has got a rotating uh, little rubber valve in here that is designed to block the air vent so that it can't be used until it's been unlocked by an adult. But if you do bayonet cap that out, then there's a little rubber ring inside and then literally the cell just drops out the bottom of it and then you can actually use it for what you want. Now, it does say, made in China, KFC, I think that means Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, one six, let's zoom down this little bit and we'll get in close so you can see the text. It says KFC 16300, that's 60 millimeters diameter by 30 millimeters long. 520 milliamp hour, which is quite good if it lives up to that expectation. 3.7 volt, 1.92 watt hour, uh, 13 grams, which is odd to put the weight, lithium iron battery, do not recharge. I think that's a disclaimer, probably. But, you know, that is a challenge. And quite frankly, the challenge has been accepted. So what I'm going to do, let's put some leads onto this. This little plastic ring here is an insulator, probably just to stop things shorting against these connections. And the middle contact, which makes sense here, is the positive and the uh, outer contact is a negative. Let's put that down there. So I've got my usual little connector I use for testing batteries. I shall strip some insulation off the wires. And I shall twist them and then tin the lithium cell. And then we'll run a test on it. We'll see what its capacity is and if it takes a charge. So in this instance, I'm going to flow some solder onto the middle gold contact. Took solder very well, that's nice. And on the outer contact, oh, they take solder really well. That is nice. Also, because they're away from the main connections of the cell, that should also protect it against little incidents. If that's the case, then this could be one of the easiest cells to repurpose. Note again, it's in the capacitor style package. It's got the little cross uh, groove vents in case something goes wrong. But also notice that the band along the side, unlike a capacitor, is marked to the positive side. Not that it really matters, other than the fact that, you know, ultimately with this little circuit board in the end, which is very neat, it means that the positive side is actually a little dimple in the middle. So let's tack this onto here. Oh, that is flowing on so easily. That's handy. And this one onto here. And now... I shall conduct the experiment and we can see what the capacity is. One moment, please. I have completed two cycles in this cell. Let's get down a bit closer. The first time I took it down to three volts at a fully discharged level and I put it on charge and the input charge was 434 milliamp hour. Then I took it back down to three volts and the second charge was 437 milliamp hour, so a slight increase but not really anything sort of, sort of significant. So, I don't know, they always, uh, I found that with the uh, last of one of these I looked at, this uh, capacitor style, that it didn't match the milliamp hour rating on it. Maybe it would evolve and get a little bit better, but I don't think it, it will probably. So I'd say this is about 400 milliamp hour. Now, on the subject of this, with its rather 
attractive little gold contacts. They are gold plated contacts. It is gold contacts, but they've got the um, wire soldered onto the standard little capsule device, then the heater, and then this insert here has an O-ring at the top, plus these sort of rings here. It's quite nicely made. It's quite a, a smart little unit. Um, they're nicely engineered. They're always nicely engineered. A lot of workers into these. Um, but I was doing a test, and I ran it on the uh, bench power supply, and when I activated it, when I varied the voltage of the power supply, it adjusted the current. It must be pulsed modulating the current to the heater to match the voltage so that as the voltage goes down, it actually keeps the power up to around about 8 watts. That was quite impressive. Uh, a lot of engineering. That tiny little microphone type capsule just contains a lot of uh, built-in intelligence. It's quite a smart thing. But there we have it. Um, it's a very neat package. Uh, not the full 500 milliamp power as removed from the device, but the 400 milliamp power is still very good. Um, and uh, just a nice bit of engineering. But uh, that's a novel twist. I like that. The fact that they've gone to that sort of concentric contact approach, it makes it quite a novel and very salvageable uh, lithium cell. Quite neat.